installation are all over the city center, right? Um, they, they basically brought the, the, the farm here, and uh, after a few days, the people can take these plants away, and they can actually plant them at home, and it worked. And mine is still growing. Um, they turned uh, a, a statue square back into a flea market for a local economy, right? Uh, uh, people out of work in all sorts of uh, uh, parts of town, they show us how they do barter trade, how they use time currency to, to sh uh, ex uh, share things and exchange and services and food and need. And they bring all that idea into the statue square right next to that school. So people demonstrating there for hours and hours to get, uh, get warm food and, and a taste of community culture. And that's why 10,000 people came. Um, and blockade uh, the let's go and not letting the officials leave until they die on. And out, right outside uh, the chief executive's home, um, again, uh, outside there, and also reclaiming transport hubs, right? Um, you cannot demonstrate in the MTR, it's also a privately owned public space, but then if you all wear a different shirt and you, your shirts happen to have a message uh, across, and then it worked. And they were able to uh, do that in all the MPRs all the time without any trouble because they, you can't be charged for, doing, for wearing a particular design of shirt. And then, of course, reclaiming the imagination of the city as well. I got this poster from a friend last night, and, and this is it. But in sense of the enthusiasm and the, uh, the, uh, the aspirations in the city, the, uh, the energy that goes behind him, and I think for some people this, this comes as a surprise. And every time you see these photographs, it's, some people still wonder, is this my city? And there are a lot of people that did not expect that this was going to happen in their city. So this, uh, but it is an indication of, uh, of the diversity of sentiment that is around in our city. Um, I, I know that uh, I promised a coffee and tea, and I'm not sure whether we should do the break now um, and then ask Tony and Lorman to go, to go later, or whether it's better to ask Tony to do the, his presentation and Lorman then sets up his, uh, his uh, PowerPoint during the break, and then uh, Lorman then takes the, after the break a few words and then we can have a discussion. Are we okay with uh, giving the word to Tony, or are you guys sitting on the edge of your chair? So we continue. One more presentation. I'll coffee first. Huh? <laughs> One more presentation. One more presentation. Okay, then. I, I was very interested in what Miranda said about uh, the government uh, referring to the hawkers as uh, uh, tumors and pests and. Uh, a threat to the public health of the city, which strikes me today as being more appropriate to uh, developers, landlords, and their uh, running dog, the government. Okay. Well, point of fact that uh, the Hawkes law and uh, advocacy law, I mean, uh, the banking law, was set up more than 100 years ago in Hong Kong when uh, the city suffered from the morning thing. In Germany, where I come from, you can't just set up a store and sell things. Uh, that is unfair to the people who pay to the for selling things. So there is pro and con, you know, and safety. Uh, and, and, and you can have a license to do it. Yes, you could. Why not? Yeah, yeah but I, I think the difference right now in Hong Kong is that we try and get rid of all license holders. Um, we wait for them to die and we don't get new licenses. So all hawks will disappear. So but there's a change of that it's changing now. We have a new the first new hawker licenses have been issued in the last four months. Ice cream vendors got their hawker licenses back. The government is cleaning up the uh, the dive pipe on the central where they're selling food and the vacant pitches they just proposed a new way of um, renting out vacant pitches with new licenses. The system that they propose is still a bit dodgy, but they're working very hard on it. So it, 
we are in a, you know, in a point of a lot of changes in you know, a lot of these issues that, that have been brought up. Um, Tony Stark said, you want to take the floor? You want to speak loud? Yes, I think I want to speak loud. So uh, today, actually, this topic is very big. Uh, I can say anything, but uh, as an architect, I think I, I'm a visual man. So I, I just like to. Uh, I think my, my interest is uh, most of the, the visual impact of uh, the, the city and the street and the art. And today, I will uh, first will I will touch on a little bit on the city and then the building and then the street. So basically, what uh, my interpretation on uh, art is uh, everywhere. It's, it's in your heart that uh, every when you see, when you observe, you can discover that it would interpret in your mind that it becomes an art. So for me, art is everywhere. Yeah. So um, this is Hong Kong now, and I actually I don't like it. Uh, I mean, many years ago, the beauty of Hong Kong is because of the skyline. There's a skyline, and then low-rise buildings, or the buildings not tall enough to hide the skyline, and that makes the beauty of Hong Kong. Even though by that time, uh, there's no uh, good or very uh, distinguished uh, architecture, people say they say that uh, in the past, Hong Kong had no architecture. It's all poor functional buildings. So it's because of uh, the, the skyline, the uh, uh, mountain, and also the harbor save Hong Kong. People come to Hong Kong because it's not for particular building. It's for the setting, for the for the for the for the, for the whole setting of Hong Kong. And but this setting has been destroyed because of the greedy or uh, the selfishness. And now and. You see, the Hong Kong is very dense, and then I can understand why people are all against new developments. And then, as an architect, I should be the get uh, advantage from redevelopment. But I'm also against of dense development because this is not the quality of life. And then we are about changing to another uh, perspective of how to keep Hong Kong have a better quality of life. And that's why I know that a lot of movements is all aimed for the same goal. 